Raise your hand if you love conflict. Yep, <laughs> notice my hand wasn't raised either. If you're like most humans, you avoid conflict altogether because it's uncomfortable. Yet you know there are some times when you should speak up and other times you regret that you did. However, resolving conflict is an essential skill that really all professional nurses need to develop. Our patients and lives depend on our ability to identify true conflict and eliminate any destructive conflict that negatively impacts the care we provide. So in this episode of Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying, I'll share an easy way for you to know, hmm, should I get involved in this conflict or not? Hi, my name is Renee Thompson. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying. I'm a workplace bullying expert and I spend the majority of my time helping individuals and organizations eliminate workplace bullying. You know, almost every day a nurse reaches out to me asking for help. And this video series gives me the opportunity to help them and to help you. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about conflict. I don't like conflict either, but the ultimate goal is not to completely avoid conflict, but rather to engage in healthy conflict that creates opportunity for innovation, improves practice, and builds stronger teams. And the good news is that resolving conflict isn't as difficult as you may think. The very first step in conflict resolution, and what I want to really focus on today, is to first identify if the situation represents true conflict or false conflict. What would be considered true conflict? Basically three situations. Bad practice, bad process, bad behavior. All right, let's say your organization is focused on hand hygiene. However, you witness someone maybe in a supportive role or a physician or maybe a fellow nurse walk out of a patient's room, enter into the next room without washing his or her hands. That's bad practice. This is true conflict, you need to speak up. Or let's say that you always run out of linens by Saturday to the point where everyone starts hoarding linens, basically hiding linen so that they have enough when it's time to bathe their patients. Well, that's a process issue. If you're running out of linens by Saturday morning and you know you don't get your next supply until Monday, you gotta speak up. Someone needs to look at the process for getting linens. Or let's say you overhear or see someone screaming and yelling at a coworker in the middle of the patient care hallway. Although you may have the tendency to turn around and go the other way, don't. You need to intervene immediately by saying, you're screaming at Jerry and you need to stop right now. And then go and support Jerry. All right, false conflict. It can initially appear as true conflict, especially when emotions are involved. However, false conflict typically involves the following. Having a different opinion than someone else. Your political views are the polar opposite of your colleagues. That's false conflict. Stay away from that conversation. You have little or no control. You believe that the State Board of Nursing's mandate to complete 30 hours of continuing education every two years is ludicrous, but your colleague wholeheartedly supports it and even offers to do an in-service on the details. Do you have any control over whether or not your State Board mandates contact hours? Nope. What about adopting an electronic medical record? Do you have any control? No, so stop spending any of your time arguing about it. The bottom line is this, if it is true conflict, you have an ethical responsibility as a professional nurse to get involved. If it's false conflict, back away. Ultimately, as nurses, we have an ethical responsibility to our public to speak up and engage in true conflict resolution, even if it feels uncomfortable. So your action step is to just 
pause before getting involved in any perceived conflict. Ask yourself, is this bad practice, bad process, bad behavior? If it is, speak up. If it's a different opinion, who should or should not have won the Academy Awards, or if you have little or no control over it, let it go. So I hope this helps you develop your conflict resolution skills as a professional nurse. So if you want to keep learning how to address bullying and civility, and maybe some conflict in your workplace, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also join me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course my blog, and hmm, why not invite me to your workplace? I would love to help you and your team cultivate and sustain a healthy, professional, and respectful workplace. So until our next conversation, be kind, take care, and stay connected. Mm -hmm.